Defense Minister Dominic Nitiwo orders the removal of all roadblocks mounted within the Saboba and Treponet districts. Former President John Ejekum Kufo advocates licensing of journalists to protect sanctity of the profession. Also ahead this evening, Parliament considering inviting the Electoral Commissioner on limited registration exercise. And in business tonight, the Bank of Ghana yet to receive two billion CDs from Ghana Amalgamated Trust to bail five local banks. And on the international front this evening, President Peter Mutharika calls on Malawians to unite and help develop the country at his inauguration for a second term. Stay with us here on News 360. We've got the details of these and much more news. You can also watch us live on 3news.com and TV3 Ghana on Facebook. Remember, we're live on DSTV channel 279 as well. Feel free to join us with your thoughts. So our first story this evening, human rights lawyer Francis Javier Soso has condemned the continual stay of Gregory Afoko in the Bureau of National Investigations. BNI Custard is describing the breach as an affront on the country's democratic credentials. According to him, this must not happen under President Kofuado, who is touted as a renowned human rights advocate. Here's a report by Godfrey Tanam. After four years of detention and trial with several evidence presented during prosecution, the Attorney General filed a nolly prosecutor to discontinue the case of Gregory Afoku, who is accused of murdering former Upper East Regional Chairman of the MPP, after one of the suspects, Asagdi Alangdi, was arrested. He was granted a 500,000 CD bill with two sureties on March 14 after being denied in several earlier attempts. Since then, the police have refused to release him, leading to a pending contempt charge against the IGP and the police administration. The family, after several efforts to get him out, filed a petition to the International Human Rights Organization, Amnesty International, to intervene. Lawyer to the family, Francis Xavier Susu, is of the view the continuous detention of the accused person is an affront on the democratic credentials of the country, which he described as unacceptable. For the sake of Ghana, for the sake of our image in the international community, for the sake of our image to our investors, that we are a country of rule of law, we are a country that respects the dignity of people, we are a country that respects the liberties of our people, I think that let us do the needful, let us respect the orders that the court has given. He urged the president to take the necessary action to get Gregory Afoko out of detention since it is not pleasant happening under his watch. This shouldn't be happening in an open democracy like ours. In fact, particularly not even under the watch of His Excellency Nanado Dankwa Akufuado. Because his track record is there for everybody to see. A record of fighting for the marginalized, a record of defending the rights of other people, a record of going to the Supreme Court fighting for freedoms and liberties of people. So clearly what is happening runs counter to the persona of who our president is. Director of Amnesty International Ghana, Robert Akutuamafo, stressed on their petition to the CID to visit Gregory Afoko as part of the investigations to establish the real facts of the matter. It's important that per our principles as an organization, we speak to the person once the person is alive and we have legal um, opportunity to seek to speak with him. We are taking the right route to ensure that we get to him, ask him the necessary questions, and then also go ahead to talk to other um, stakeholders to get the facts of the matter. He is hopeful the CID will grant the request for the issue to be settled amicably. We have heard from his lawyers. We have had um, two petitions, um, which means that those are claims being made by other people. We need to make sure that we get the right information. Amnesty International stands by its objectivity and um, our factualness, that people trust the information we bring. And one of the things we do is to speak to the right people. Gregory Afoko is accused of pouring acid on the former Upper East Regional Chairman, Adams Mahama, leading to his death on Thursday, May 21, 2015. 
Now, lecturers at the Kumasi Technical University have given government up to the end of June to migrate them onto the public university's salary structure to avert a strike. At a news conference in Kumasi, the lecturers noted that government's inaction is causing tension and demotivating both teaching and non-teaching staff. Here's reports by Beatrice Spiel-Gabra. Six polytechnics were converted into technical universities by an Act of Parliament in 2016. According to the association, the amendment of the Act that converted the six polytechnics into universities is complete, as well as the audit of all senior members to the extent that some of them lost their positions in the process. The Technical University Teachers Association of Ghana, impressing home their demands, embarked on a strike in September last year. But the Ministry of Education and the National Council for Technical Education impressed upon the association to call off the action to pave way for a staff audit. So far, over two and a half years, as I stated earlier, since the, tech, the initial Technical Universities Act, Staff of the six converted technical universities, initially converted technical universities, have been working without the due and commensurate salaries, and we find very distasteful and unwarranted. Tutak is unhappy for not being part of the migration process by the Fair Wages and Salaries Commission. We are told to state clearly that due to the unnecessary delays, we hereby give the government up to the end of June 2019 to migrate all qualified staff of the TUs to their rightful skills on the PUSS, that's the Public University Salary Structure. Otherwise, together with our national body, we shall advise ourselves within the ambit of the law of the land. The Kumasi Technical University branch of TUTAC has given government up to the end of June to migrate them to avert any industrial action. Uh, former President John Ejakum Kufo is calling for the licensing of journalists to protect the sanctity of the profession. Speaking at the launch of the 70th anniversary of the Ghana Journalists Association in Accra, he indicated that a licensing regime would make journalists more accountable and responsible in carrying out their duties. Ghana repealed its criminal libel and seditious laws in July 2001, six months into the presidency of John Ajakum Kufo. The repeal decriminalizes libel and gives citizens the option to use civil means to check journalism practice. The former president said his government was not only committed to strengthening the media landscape, but also deepen democracy to enable the media to contribute immensely towards shaping government policies. Media freedom does not mean that members of your profession or media houses can operate in the media landscape without any limitations or rules of engagement. This is why practitioners should be well versed in the regular laws of sedition and defamation. Further, the establishment of an association such as yours to help curb the excesses of conduct among its members becomes crucial. He urged the Ghana Journalist Association to monitor and sanction journalists who go against the tenets of the profession. The association should give clear, unadulterated and principled leadership to the profession whose loftiest preoccupation must be to serve the welfare of the sovereign people of Ghana. The former president said journalists must admit when they make mistakes in their reportage and apologize. In your role as watchdogs of society, media exposes of corrupt public officials must be in fair and accurate reporting. You must do your jobs on this call without fear, favor, or partisanship. However, if during your duties you get something wrong, please be bold and humble enough to accept your shortcomings and apologize for your misreporting. It makes you a more credible journalist because you are is human. He bemoaned the murder of investigative journalist Ahmed Hussein Swale, who worked with Tiger IPI until his death, describing it as regrettable. But there are still dangers lurking against 
your profession. The forces of darkness will try to continue to resist you for as long as you dare to shine your light on their nefarious, diabolical, and nation-wrecking activities. But there you must, for yours is a mission to contribute to enhancing democracy, freedom, and good governance for all our people. The leadership of the GJA conferred on him the title Champion of Champions in Democracy. Now, the Ghana Independence Broadcasters Association has warned of dire economic implications should the government go ahead to implement the Digital Terrestrial Television, DTT, access control policy. In an interview with President of the Association, Andrew Danso in Inkra, he expressed worry that the policy would block free-to-air television content and will not only slight FTA broadcast industry but also affect importers of TV sets. In a policy document which says that you are going to introduce conditional access on top of a free-to-air transmission. What it means is that free-to-air will no longer become free-to-air but it will be based on condition. You will receive the signal based on a particular condition. What are some of the conditions? Some of the conditions are based on your location. Some of the conditions are based on the programming. Some of the conditions are based on subscription. If you put the three together, what it means is that when we allow free to air to be on condition basis, certain people can be denied the opportunity of receiving what they were receiving free. Some people will be denied based on where they are located. Some, certain people will be denied to receive what they were receiving free based on how much they owe what they owe. We believe this is not what free-to-air television signed up to do. And we have, um, as it were, continued our business or brought our business to this level based on the free-to-air model. And therefore, we believe we have to continue doing free-to-air and no encryption. In other words, it's not only the average viewer or consumer of content on television that's going to suffer this, but television stations as a business. What are the economic implications on this? It is not only just the television station, but it is also the importer, the one who brings in the television set. The television set he is bringing in, take whatever model of television set that you are looking at, they have done this with the best practice in all over the world, where they sent their television set. What it means is that the Ghanaian importer is going to go to the manufacturer to say, uh, because of the system we are operating in Ghana, we need a television set which can receive XYZ signal. Um, the one we are using currently cannot be used, and so you have to bring in this one. When you bring it in now, it has to be tuned. It has to go for that kind of um, encrypted, or let's say the software, to be introduced into the television. What it also means is that the set-top boxes, what we call the decoders that we have currently, apart from those um, pay TV decoders which are already in the system, the ones we, we use to receive free-to-air signals are no more going to be working. They'll have to be taken out and a new set brought in. Then again, we do not know how much one is going to pay for having a decoder and to watch something which is supposed to be free. Well, so this issue has raised a lot number of concerns and we'll keep getting at it to get some more answers and clarity on all the other issues as we go on in our subsequent bulletins. That the Defence Minister Dominic Nito has ordered the removal of all roadblocks mounted within the Saboba and Chiripone district where ethnic conflicts have caused the loss of lives and property, leading a bipartisan delegation to Saboba, he directed the two traditional rulers of the feuding communities to ensure the directive is carried as part of efforts to resolve the conflict. Zubayde Ismail has more. It was revealed during the visit by the Defence Minister and the bipartisan delegation that communities like Garinkuka, Wanichiking, Ugando in the Chiripone district and Nambiri, Wapuli and other parts of the Saboba Township, which link the two districts, have mounted roadblocks to prevent crossing to and from the two districts. This, according to residents, has prevented them from assessing health care services in Chiripone. The Defence Minister, Dominic Intiwo, called on them to remove the roadblocks. I want to appeal to the concombers and the chakwases within Chiripone and Saboba area. Please. The people of Ghana 
are expecting you to do only one thing. Lay down your arms and let us talk. Talk within yourselves. Enough is enough. The gunshots must cease now. So I want to appeal to the chiefs. When you get back to your communities, if your area has a roadblock, whether it's a Chakwasi community or Konkoma community, please tell the young men to remove that roadblock. In about a month's time, kids from Chirpone will have to go. Konkoma kids will have to go to Chirpone town and write their BCE. If they don't write this year, you have destroyed their lives totally. If they don't get an opportunity to go and write because we are fighting, that is the end of thousands and thousands and thousands of them, their lives. He again bemoaned how the previously harmonious coexistence between the two tribes have turned sour. The reason I'm here is because I come from this region. It's very embarrassing to us in government. When the National Security Minister wants to do briefing, Konkomba versus Chakwasi, this number of people have died. How am I going to look up in cabinet? Everybody looks at Nitu and be looking at you like this. Oh, your people are fighting again. Please, don't disgrace us because you sent us there. Dominic Intiu demanded a commitment to peace from the paramount chief of Saboba, Ubo John Matir. The chief Ubo John Matir made some demands. The curfew in Saboba and its environs be reviewed to the hours of 10 o'clock p.m. to 5 o'clock a.m. As it is a known fact that Saboba and its environs remains relatively peaceful. The ban on the use of motorbikes be lifted. Motorbikes are the main means of transport for people in the district. Many of the residents of Saboba accused the military officers deployed to the area of being partial in the operations, but these accusations were refuted by the Chief of Army Staff, Major General William Azure Ayamdu. Because resources are not unlimited, it has an effect on how we operate. And this is probably why you see the way we are deployed in this some communities and you are thinking that we are taking sides. That is not the case at all. But if there is any matter that comes to your notice and you think the soldiers are treating any part of your community unfairly, feel free to bring the matter to the front so that we can investigate. Four Anufo dominated communities and one Konkomba community in the Saboba district have been torched since the renewed clashes. Let's turn to presidency now as President Ikufuadu says his government has taken the policy decision to integrate climate action into Ghana's national development agenda. Speaking at the R20 Austrian World Summit on climate change, he revealed that all local assemblies have been mandated to address climate change issues in their medium-term development plans. President Ikufuadu noted the Paris Agreement and SDG Goal 13, which demand urgent action to combat climate change and its impact, is providing the framework for Ghana to forge ahead, a reason for which government decided to clamp down on illegal mining, which has been destroying the nation's forests and water bodies. At the local level, the local assemblies who are responsible for local administration have also been mandated and have indeed incorporated climate change issues in their local development plans to guide them as to what to do in the local level. We have banned the harvesting of a particular species of food groups where food uh, feed in order to maintain our harbor, uh, our forests. And finally, we have some 20,000 young Ghanaians who are planting 10 million trees across the country. President Ikufuado reiterated Ghana's commitment in promoting the deployment of renewable energy in line with government's policy target of 10% renewables in the energy mix from the current 1%. The president revealed further that he has engaged a select group of CEOs from the private sector to push forward Ghana's green agenda in the context of the Sustainable Development Goals, which has yielded positive results. President Ikufado on the sidelines of the summit met the Hungarian president, His Excellency Janos Ada. The president also met with Kristalina Ivanova Georgieva Kinova, a Belgian economic analyst currently serving as chief executive officer of the World Bank. 
On our MTN video report tonight, our citizen journalist Imano Donto is requesting government to complete the Presby GHS block at Dunkonofin in the central region. This is Presby Junior High School. This is a Form 3 class going on under a tree. This is another classroom, a Form 1 class. Look at the state of the class. And this school is located in the Dunkong municipality. This is the building that was started by the PTA and a philanthropist came to their aid and it has gotten to this level. But it has come to a halt. We are pleading on all organization and well wishes to come to the aid of Dunkau Presby JHS. Reporting from Dunkau Offen, Emmanuel Danto. You can also send your video report via WhatsApp number 055-1433-044. Certainly do stay with us here on News 360. We've got all the latest from the world of business coming up with Parker CSR shortly. Hello all there, very good evening and a warm welcome to the business news segment here on News 360. My name is Pa Kwesi Asari. Let's start off with happenings in Ghana's banking industry because the Bank of Ghana is yet to receive the 2 billion CDs meant to support five local banks in order to meet the 400 million CD minimum capital requirements. The funds expected to have hit the account of the central bank from the Ghana Amalgamator Trust has since not been released three months after the March deadline. The Ghana Amalgamated Trust in January this year gave an assurance that it will start recapitalizing the five local banks from March after it raises the two billion cities from investors for its five-year corporate bond. According to an agreement reached with the Bank of Ghana, the five local banks should meet the minimum capital requirement by March 31, 2019. The government last year set up the Ghana Amalgamated Trust, a special purpose vehicle to support some local banks which required a top-up. Three months after the March deadline, the, lo the Bank of Ghana is yet to receive the amount. We are quite confident, given the government's commitment, to ensure that the GAT Bank succeed. If you remember, we had mentioned at this forum that given that government guarantee, that sovereign guarantee, we regard card banks as banks that meet the minimum capital requirement. Card banks, I cannot give you the exact timelines for when the money would hit their accounts. I think you should try to get that information from the GAT. Meanwhile, the governor pointed out the energy sector debt was draining the country's reserve. We are paying almost $140 million a month, right, uh, for these uh, energy-related uh, take-or-pay arrangements. And this constitutes a major source of outflow on, 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 on our cash flow with, with an impact in terms of the level of reserves. You can see that we lost almost, uh, how much, $600 million in the last few months. Away from the banking industry, Deputy Trade Minister Robert Ahumka Lindsay says Ghana is fully committed to the success of the Continental Free Trade Area Agreement despite concerns of revenue loss raised by the International Monetary Fund. So far, 22 countries, including Ghana, have ratified the agreement. Continental Free Trade Area, a trade agreement between participating African countries, has received the minimum number of ratification needed to come into effect. The trade bloc spanning 49 countries with a combined gross domestic product of $3 trillion will facilitate interregional trade, boost growth and help to alleviate poverty. Among the major aspects to be deliberated include rules of origin, tariff concessions, payment and settlements, non-tariff barriers and trade information amongst others. 
The International Monetary Fund warned Ghana could face revenue shortfalls if the country starts the implementation of the Africa Continental Free Trade Area Agreement this year. The IMF maintains that although the agreement will boost trade on the continent, it will affect earnings and employment opportunities in some sectors of the economy. But Deputy Trade and Industry Minister Robert Ahom Kalinse says the concerns raised by the IMF will be addressed in the final agreement. When I hear statements like, it's not ready, we should do X, Y, and Z, I understand where people are saying that from. But the reality is this. The journey of us selling and exporting amongst ourselves within Africa is not a question. It is something we must do. How to get there is something we can debate, but the destination is not debatable. So the point then becomes, it's not a question if it's Ghana going to delay. Ghana wants to put all the actions in place to take advantage of it. But we understand that as in every journey, you will face challenges. And Ghana will face each one of those challenges and deal with them. AU Commission on Trade, Albert Mochenga, indicated the benefits of the agreement far outweigh the concerns raised by the IMF. We require 22 ratifications for the agreement to enter into force. And this should be 30 days after receiving the 22nd instrument ratification. It is against this background that we are planning to launch the operational phase of the African Continental Free Trade Area in July this year in Niamey, Niger. To facilitate the launch, work is advancing very well on supporting instruments. And these supporting instruments are on rules of origin, schedules of concessions on, tariff, on, uh, of tariff, on tariffs on trading goods, online non-tariff barriers monitoring and elimination mechanism, digital payments and settlement platform, and the African Trade Observatory portal. Trade and Finance Ministers of the various countries that have signed and ratified the agreement will meet in June to consider other areas of concern before the final agreement is presented to the heads of state at the next AU meeting. Nigeria, Eritrea and Benin are yet to sign on to the agreement. In other news, Promacido Ghana, producers of Cowbell, says it will continue to put on the market quality product. At a ceremony to mark its 20th anniversary in Accra, the managing director, France, uh, managing director Festus Tete, expressed the company's resolve to give back to society through its numerous social intervention programs. The theme for the celebration is 20 years of nourishing bodies, minds and dreams. The company as part of its celebrations has pledged to drill boreholes to provide portable water in some deprived communities. Cowbell cares about this community uh, and therefore it, it is the essence of the brand to give back to the community that supports it uh, in the area of sports, in the area of education and other social uh, um, activities and interventions that we have done. And we believe that it is a part of the brand, which the brand will continue uh, now and into the future. Festo Tete noted Promacidor will soon introduce a quiz competition, Carbapedia, aimed at identifying and rewarding excellence in mathematics. Promacidor has over the years supported cycling and education. The brand has already announced an innovation that they are bringing, which is mathematics uh, quiz. And for us, it's also one of the key areas, as I indicated, the foundation of all learning is literacy and then mathematics. So if they are going to go into mathematics as an area, then it means the dreams that they have are similar to the dreams and visions that we have. And we see them as partners that we can work together to support the children of Ghana. Director General of the Ghana Education Service, Professor Kwesi Opokwa Mankwa, lauded the company for its cognitive stimulative activities such as its quizzes, essays, and reading contests. Promacido Ghana is the leading producer of high quality food products across the country. Over the years, the brand has provided a wide range of dairy products to meet the nutritional needs of Ghanaians.
Well, that's all for the very latest in business news. Thanks very much for watching. For more business news stories, you can log on to our website, www.3news.com. My name is Parker Siasari. Over to you, Alfred. Obviously, thank you uh, with business. Let's go on to some more stories. Uh, Frames Oil Company has donated assorted food items to the Muslim community at Mile 7 here in Accra. The gesture formed part of the company's corporate social responsibility. Ramadan in Islam is the period where Muslims fast and ask for purity to draw closer to God and to remind them of the suffering of the less fortunate. Muslims are expected to put more efforts into following the teachings of Islam. The donation was to appreciate the sacrifice of Muslim faithful in the month-long fast. An ambassador of Frims Oil, Odia Henkai Kwame Yabwa, on behalf of the chief executive officer, said the company, as part of its expansion program, has opened a new branch at Mile 7. <laughs> We want to appreciate the goodness of Allah and the fasting you are undertaking. Our father, Reverend Dr. Frimpong, through his Mile 7 branch, is supporting with assorted items to break the fast. The Zongo chief of Mile 7, Yakubu Sumaila, thanked Frim's Oil and the CEO for the donation. We appreciate the effort. We will use the items for the intended purpose. May Allah bless you for the gestures. Frames Oil Company with over 70 retail outlets is one of the country's leading oil marketing companies. Let's turn to some other stories this evening as Parliament is considering inviting the Electoral Commissioner to answer questions on the limited registration exercise scheduled to commence on June 7. Majority Leader Osei Che Mensah Bunsu answering questions on the floor of Parliament says despite the current court suit on the matter, the House will consider some explanation on the exercise to be carried out by the EC. The exercise forms part of the EC's preparations towards the conduct of the 2019 district level elections and the referendum on the election of Metropolitan Municipal and District Chief Executive scheduled for Tuesday, December 10. Even before the start of the exercise, the political parties have raised issues with the posture of the EC. Mr. Speaker, the Electoral Commission is embarking on a number of activities, and the Speaker, it's been a while since they came here, especially with even the new chair, if we could have a committee of the whole where they would come and brief us about their pending activities. Parliament on resumption on Tuesday took keen interest in the matter. I think we can brainstorm on that because I do know that these same matters relating to the conduct of the, the um, limited registration uh, matters that have been taken to court by some known uh, sympathizers of a known political party. And, <laughs> and, the, and the lawyer is one of our own in the chamber. Let's speak again, let's do some brainstorming on that to see whether it may be possible in the circumstances to bring the letter commissioner to respond to the issues that are pending in court. Meanwhile, the House has been contributing on Menstrual Hygiene Day. Future research is needed on affordability, quality and safety of available sanitary materials and management and maintenance of school toilet facilities, girls empowerment and community engagement for adolescent protection. It is critical to support the scale up of community-based program engaging with adolescent girls and boys. Well, the Ministry of Gender and Social Protection is to liaise with trade and industry to abolish import tariffs on sanitary parts 
in a bid to improve its access to young girls in deprived communities across the country. The Deputy Gender Minister, Frida Prempe, made this known at a ceremony to commemorate Menstrual Hygiene Day in Accra. Access to menstrual hygiene products or sanitation facilities, particularly for some girls in school, is a challenge. School authorities say some school girls are compelled to spend some few days away from the classroom because of poor menstruation management. As part of efforts to promote good menstrual hygiene management and raise awareness about the challenges women and girls face due to menstruation, the Menstrual Hygiene Day was instituted in 2013. Marking the day in Accra, the Deputy Gender Minister, Frida Prempe, hinted of plans to abolish the 20% import tariffs on sanitary materials. But we are championing this and we hope that government will listen to us through the ministry and for that matter collaboration with the Ministry of Trade so that the 20% tax could be reduced. Once it's reduced, it will affect the price and the sale of um, sanitary parts. But I would also advocate for a company to set up a factory to produce the parts. Deputy Director General of the Ghana Education Service, Dr. Kwabina Bempatando listed some measures to improve menstrual hygiene in schools. And it is important to note that in the ESP or the Education Strategic Plan of the government from 2018 to 2030, there is an effort to ensure that every single school has clean toilet facilities for especially our young girls. Girls also require menstrual hygiene materials at school to be used during their emergency situations. The Ghana Education Service is putting in place adequate intervention to ensure that no school child is left out of education delivery, uh, especially because of menstruation. Executive Director of Obapa Development Foundation, Nanahima Ajwa Awindo, advocated the provision of toilet facilities with changing rooms to enhance security and privacy for girls during menstruation. A lot of people have issues. Of course, if you don't have a private place to change your parts, if you don't have a private place to have, you know, to go to your urinary, you not feel like even going there because you're already scared, you're already afraid, you're already shy. So if you don't have a privacy, you know, you can't have that kind of ease. This undermines the educational opportunities, health and overall social status of women and girls around the world. As a result, millions of women and girls are kept from reaching their full potential. Other speakers called for concerted efforts to improve sanitation infrastructure in schools, access to hygienic menstrual products, and promoting education on menstrual hygiene management. Certainly a key issue there that the menstrual cycle shouldn't prevent young ladies from attending school, most importantly. Stay with us here on News 360. 